Hi everyone, in this video we'll discuss on-call schedules and escalation policies. We'll show you how you can create different kinds of schedules with multiple layers, how you can easily swap on-call users when they're unavailable via schedule overrides, and how you can create escalation policies, that is, the order in which your users will be alerted. Let's take a look at a sample schedule structure for our IT operations team over here. They have two schedules, thus a primary on-call rotation and a secondary on-call rotation. The IT support primary schedule consists of two shifts, the weekday shift which had Michael, Jim and Kevin as the users in rotation from Monday 9am to Friday 6pm and the weekend shift which had Ryan and Kelly from Friday 6pm to Monday 9am. The IT support secondary has Pam, David and Cameron in a 7 day continuous rotation from Monday 9am to the next Monday's 9am. Let's see how we can build this now. To create your own on-call rotation with the team you want to create the schedule for or as the IT operations team, go to the schedules tab over here and click on the create schedule button. Let's create the IT support secondary rotation first and this is the same duty schedule builder. So we'll add a first layer, for this I think we're just going to need one single layer. The shift length will be 7 days, we'll make the start on a Monday at 9am. And you can choose the end time that you like, but for me, I'm going to choose the no end date button, so the schedule will persist until it's not removed from an escalation policy. Let's add our users in order, so that's Pam, David and Cameron. And just click on update. You can now visualize the schedule in the visualization at the bottom. You can get a daily, weekly or monthly view. So in a continuous schedule, you're, this is pretty much what your schedule is going to look like. Three users on call, one after the other. Let's go and create our IT support primary on call rotation now, via which we'll also show you how you can restrict your schedule on a daily and weekly basis. We'll add a first layer. This will be the weekday shift. Shift length will remain 7 days. We'll make it start on a Monday at 9 a.m. and end next year, maybe even later, a Friday at 6 p.m. Now let's add our users in order. So for our weekday shift, we had Michael, Jim, and Kevin. Now if we were to visualize this right now, this is what the schedule will look like. This is very similar to what we made previously for the secondary schedule. Let's form a restriction on a weekly basis. So this schedule will be active only from Monday 9 a.m. to Friday 6 p.m. And once I update this, you're going to see that these users are only going to be active during the daily shift the business hours if you may and that's it let's go create our second layer now which is the weekend shift shift length remains the same let's make it start on a friday now instead from 6 pm to sometime next year on a monday 9 am Let's add our users, which are Ryan and Kelly. And again, we'll restrict this to time of the week, which is Friday 6 p.m. to Monday 9 a.m. On the bottom, you can see that the weekday shift is as is, but the weekend shift has been added with either Ryan or Kelly stepping in on every weekend. So let's say that Jim won't be available on the Wednesday of this week, which is the 15th of November. So we can add an override, allowing another user to step in for Jim. So let's do David for Jim. And it starts on November 15th, 9 a.m. to November 15th, 6 a.m. And that's it. Let's add David as the user. Now if I were to update this, you can see and David Wallace will be stepping in as an override whenever Jim is not available. Let's now talk about escalation policies. Escalation policies help you define the order in which users will be alerted when an incident is triggered. In this example, we'll be creating the IT support escalation policy. As soon as the event is triggered, the IT support primary on-call rotation schedule will notify whoever is on-call, and that happens to be Michael as of now. 
After five minutes, if the incident is still not acknowledged, we'll move downwards in the policy and the IT support secondary schedule will call its corresponding on-call users, which is spam. And if the incident is not acknowledged in 15 minutes, the policy will notify a chosen supervisor or manager. In this case, that's David Wallace. Let's go and set this up for our service. To create your escalation policy like the one we described, go to your team and click on the escalation policies tab from the secondary sidebar. Click on the create escalation policy button on the top right. Give it a name, some SAP ID support escalation. So let's add the first rule. Immediately we want to call the IT support primary. After five minutes, I want to call the IT support secondary. And after 15 minutes, I want to call David Wallace. Now I can choose to repeat this cycle as many times as I want. In the case that nobody acknowledges this, it will go back to the first rule. So let's choose three and click on create. And that's it. Now go to your service and associate this escalation policy as the default escalation policy for your team. Just click on save. That's it. And that's all about on-call rotations and escalation policies. If you want more examples on how you can set up your escalation policies and schedules, check out the documentation in the link below. In the next video, we'll show you how you can set up your custom incident priorities to better classify incidents and demonstrate urgency.